Hi, I'm here to talk to you about why it's really important that you are aware of what your subject knowledge in drama is like and how you can keep developing your subject knowledge in order to fully equip you to teach a varied and rich curriculum, but also to provide your students with the knowledge and understanding of plays and how plays work in order to be successful in their practical work. Drama is a great subject to teach because not only is it built on this 2000 year history, it's also really organic and it's changing all the time. It's moving forward all the time. And although this makes it really exciting because one year is always different to the next, it also means that we have to really stay on our game and be fully aware of any new movements or companies or plays or playwrights and so that we can expose our students to this new information and keep moving our drama department forward, our teaching forward, and give them the tools to be really successful in their practical work and their written work. But we also have to give them the foundations of this rich tapestry of the history of theatre so that they're able to look back at what was happening at particular moments and make those connections between theatre then and what's happening in the theatre now or how theatre is being used now. And this will help them to make really successful choices when they're putting their own work together and ultimately understand what makes effective theatre for an audience. So how can you do this? How can you keep ensuring that you keep pushing your subject knowledge forward? Well, the first thing you need to do is look backwards and think about what aspect of the history of theatre you're perhaps not as confident in. So knowing your history, going back through the history of theatre and trying to fill in any gaps that you might have, in particular, perhaps in the timeline. So where and when things happened. Recognising what theatre's purpose was at those particular moments and what was happening in society at the time. That contextual understanding is key to us understanding the purpose of theatre and the impact of theatre on audiences. Of course, our students have to know this for the written paper. They have to recognise and understand context and historical understanding of the play and the playwright's intentions. But when it comes to practical work too, recognizing and understanding why theater was made helps us to make choices about the way that we should be putting this piece of work together. Knowing whether theater was being used to explore that society as it was, or whether it was trying to initiate some kind of political, social or social change will help our students to recognize and understand the different styles in theatre or the way that practitioners might use theatre in order to have a particular impact on an audience. So of course, alongside this, we also have to know our practitioners and we need to recognise and understand why they were making theatre. A massive part of our job now as teachers is being able to provide our students with work and a practitioner that links really closely with that work in order to be able to create success for an audience and for the examiner. So we need to be able to feel confident that we have a range of practitioners that we can call upon and that we have a really good understanding of their methodologies. And we are aware of practitioners that are going to suit our students so that we can make really good links with plays that are going to suit our students and give them the best chance of being successful when it comes to performance. So knowing what that practitioner's style is or who they were influenced by and who they've gone on to influence can help us to make connections between different practitioners so that we can look more widely and keep developing our subject knowledge in these areas. And therefore, of course, all of this comes down to plays. So we need to be looking back and making sure that we're reading notable plays and thinking about whether those plays are suitable for our students, but also that we have a really good awareness of all of the plays that are included in the specification and a really good sense of why those plays might have been chosen by the exam board. We should be reading new plays all the time. And if we find a play that we like or that works really well with our students when it comes to practical work, we should be trying to read as much of that playwright's 
catalogue as we can, or finding plays that are connected to that playwright in terms of themes or ideas or settings in some way. This will enable us to keep providing the best choice of plays for our students when it comes to practical work. It's so important that we find plays that suit them individually, that suit their performance style, that gives them the best chance of being successful in performance, of being able to engage with the audience in a really effective way or that we are exposing our students to plays that are inspiring their own work when it comes to the devising components. And so going to the theatre is also really important. This is where we really develop our subject knowledge and where our, subject, our students' subject knowledge really develops too. And if that's really hard for you in your setting, then try to get theatre companies in. But that exposure to live performance helps our students to understand what the play should look like or what play should look like beyond the page and also that most important thing of what makes effective theatre for an audience and by knowing that they will make better choices when it comes to creating their own practical work or having ideas when it comes to talking about the written paper. So to summarise, the best things that you can do in order to keep moving forward and develop your subject knowledge are obviously research when you're looking back, but social media is your best friend when it comes to looking forward. It allows you to network, it allows you to find people who work in settings like yours and to find out what kind of plays they're using, what's working for them, what practitioners they're using, and so that you feel much more confident in trying those ideas out in your own setting and then sharing those ideas with each other. Try to join mailing groups so that theatre companies can let you know what's happening with them. And as you advance in your career, consider becoming an examiner because that really keeps you on your game when it comes to subject knowledge and really challenges you to keep pushing yourself to find out more. So this is obviously really straightforward if, you're in, if you have a job or you're working in a school already because obviously it's a really organic process. And if you keep engaging and you keep pushing yourself, you'll your subject knowledge will naturally develop and it will grow over time. But it's not so easy, of course, if you don't have a permanent job at the moment. And if you don't, don't worry, because those social networking, all of that, that side of things, all of that research is obviously available to you as well all the time, as is becoming an examiner. But also use this opportunity to go into other drama departments, especially if you're on supply, and find out what works for them find out what plays old and new they're using in those settings with those students and then go away and read them if you don't know them go away and research the practitioners if you don't know them this will really help you to stay on your game stay in the know so that when you do get that job you can approach it feeling really confident that you know what to use in your classroom and ultimately remember that drama is not a subject that's stuck in the past. So if you want to be part of a really buzzing and successful department, then it's really important that you keep pushing yourself and moving forward too. Good luck. <laughs>